G'day fellas. Welcome back to a first person video of myself playing up against the Sniper AoE. Now this gentleman is an Age of Empires 2 player. For anybody who isn't familiar with him, he streams over on Twitch. And this game here is a game that I probably took part in about a day or two ago. Now I've recorded this footage and I've intended to give it to you guys with a voiceover as well. Now, the reason behind this is because it becomes quite stressful when you are playing these games because one of the things is that you, you've got to think about what you're doing and at the same time you've got to communicate. One of, I, I've routinely found when I play on stream, I play a lot worse than when I'm just not playing on stream. So it's one of the things that uh, I, I've been doing, I've been trying a lot more, uh, is just recording without talking. So I hope that you guys have in, will enjoy this because this is going to be from my perspective and, and from afterwards. So... The map that we're playing on, it is, I think it's Warring Islands. I'm not 100% sure on this. So this is a water map. You can see all those beautiful deep sea fish we've got on the mini map down in the bottom right hand corner. And uh, we're just picking up some sheep. So I'm playing the Chinese. Uh, I can't remember exactly. I think he's playing the Delhi uh, or it could be the Abbasids. I'm not sure exactly. Uh, we'll work out that a little bit later. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what we're doing. So I'm playing the Chinese. Now the Chinese are, in my opinion, one of the best civilizations on water full stop. And there's a couple of reasons why that is. Now, the first reason is because of their civilization bonus. They get a 20% uh, civilization bonus to their docks, which means that their docks produce 20% faster, which is massive. Like when you think about it, okay, over the course of, you know, your opponent has built five fishing boats, you've built six fishing boats. So it's generating a lot more resources for you in the early game. It also means that when it gets to the mid game or the late game, you're able to get out military ships a lot faster. And so as a consequence, what we're doing is we're really making sure that we just prioritize getting those docks down as quickly as possible. It's one of the reasons why I chose to pick China on this map was because of how strong it is on water maps. One of the other huge bonuses that has happened quite recently with the Chinese is that they've actually changed the way that the Imperial official works. So the Imperial official is a unique economic unit for the Chinese. In the bottom left hand corner of the screen, just above my housing population, you can see it's 15 out of 20 currently. There's a zero out of four. That represents how many Imperial officials I've got. So you can build a maximum of four Imperial officials. So I'm gonna make sure that I get out one as soon as I've got enough food for it, because they are quite expensive. They're 150 food. You don't wanna lose them, because if you do, it's expensive to replace them. Now I'm gonna get one out and I'm going to start supervising my lumber camp. Now, you can't actually supervise a dock, but if you could, that would be crazy overpowered, and that's probably the reason why you can't do it. And you might be wondering, what exactly does supervision do? What it's going to do is it's going to increase the drop-off that we get from our lumber camp. So you can see my villagers at the moment, they're dropping off plus 10. That's going to go from plus 10 up to plus 12. So they're going to be dropping off an extra 2 wood. Now, they're not taking an extra 2 wood out of the trees. It is magically giving them an extra 2 wood, so that 150... Uh, 150 wood all of a sudden becomes 180 wood if I've done my maths correctly I think that's right 180 wood so it definitely works out a lot better for you in the long run this can be incredibly strong as well when you've got things like uh, gold mines so on this map as you can see I've got four gold mines uh, four of the big gold mines one small gold mine so it, if I am supervising my lumber or my uh, mining camps while I'm doing that it's going to make it so I've got more gold to actually mine out of that or not more gold but i get more gold out of mining that so it's really important to do because it's essentially giving you resources out of thin air so now i've got my double docks going i've theorized that i think a double dock opening should pretty much be able to go unpunished on this map i do suspect if you're playing against an ag aggressive civilization like the mongols or something like that and they try and go for an early transport ship or something then you might be in a bit of trouble but yeah, I think we'll probably, you know, I'm going to keep being greedy until someone tells me I can't be greedy anymore. So I'm going to keep on doing this. And the reason why you want to do that, fishing boats are incredibly, incredibly affordable. So they only cost 60 wood. So the sooner you can get double docks out, the better for you. You can already see that uh, we, we've just chopped so much of this forest away already. So going to be needing to get a second lumber camp in there. Quick, smart. My general rule when it comes to lumber camps is if I can fit one in, I put one in. That's normally the best way it works for me. Ideally, you want to be getting these deep sea fish instead of the shore fish. You can see I've got a villager that's out there at the moment just getting a shore fish. So you want to be going for the deep sea fish with your fishing boats. About to drop down our landmark. There it is, the Barbican of the Sun. Just putting it on the coast. Not too fussed about it. And so the idea is with this civilization, 
you've got a couple of options, but in my opinion, the best strategy that you can do is kind of a semi-fast castle. And the reason why is because it enables you to have a huge economy. You can build it up in the early game, then at the same time stack up food for the castle age, but you still need to have a little bit of a defense out there. And so that's the kind of strategy that I'm thinking about going for here. You can see that we've still got quite a fair bit of wood and quite a bit of, uh, of villagers on gold. All of our food is going to be coming from our fishing boats at this point. So that's all we're going to be worried about when it comes to, you know, food. We're not going to be even looking at land. We're going to be looking at berries. Now dropping down that second lumber camp. Now, I will just provide you guys a caveat, okay? There is going to be a point in this video where I'm actually going to be departing. I'm just going to leave you with it, okay? I'm going to leave the video in your hands. That means that there's not going to be any commentary. It's just going to be me. Or it's, it's just going to be the gameplay, and it's going to be... That's it. It's just going to be the gameplay. No, nothing else, okay? Uh, and and so I'll, I'll let you know when I do that. And the reason why is because I've just got I've got so much content to get through. I would love to stay here and cast the entirety of this game, but I promise you, if I did that for all of the videos or all of the gameplay footages that I've got, I probably wouldn't be able to get all of them out for you. So I want you to let me know in the comments whether you like this idea, whether you like this concept, uh, and and because I, I'm I'm thinking more about it. And basically, I want to explain my mindset, explain what I'm doing, but then at the same time give you guys the ability to watch the entirety of the game because a lot of the comments I do read on shorter videos where I don't go and, and give you the entire game it will be people saying can we see the full game where can we see the full game and so now I've dropped down an early market the idea of the market oh, just before we move on though, let me know in the comments though wh whether that's a good thing whether that's a bad thing uh, th that's what I would love to hear. So I've got an early market. So I theorized the reason why a double dock is so strong is because you can drop down an early market as soon as you age up and then just cash in all of your uh, food for uh, gold. And then so that way you can just make sure that you're chopping out a whole bunch of wood. And then as soon as you get up, you just cash out all of that food into gold. So now beginning to put pressure onto the enemy. You can see we've got two junks heading to the opponent's base. The idea is that we want to get our upgrades. You can see that once again, we're, we're making sure to sell. And so I'm getting our ranged upgrade because our junks are archer ships. They are affected by upgrades. So I'm making sure to get both of them. And now we've spot a couple of fishing boats. Looks like we are able to prevent him from just getting a, a little bit of uh, a little bit of fish here. And that's exactly what we want to do. We just want to be burning these down. And we notice that there's no resistance. At this point, I kind of like, I feel like, you know what? I, I think I've just won this game right away he, he just didn't think i was going to pressure early or something he's got no no ships to defend himself and you know I, i'm feeling like this is going to be pretty darn decent so I'm, I'm very happy with myself you can see the upgrades that we've got uh down the bottom combined with just the amount of ships that we've got and so i noticed that he starts running his fishing boats and it's at this point that i'm like all right we're going to chase you off in that direction we're going to look in the other direction and now i realize i'm under attack from him it's the old one too just when i went to attack him he went to attack me so it was like we we're somewhat mirroring ourselves now. I try and heal up my, one of my fishing boats here. It doesn't look like it uh, it, it goes off. I, I try my best. I, I realize I'm probably going to need more fishing boats if I want to be able to heal up that many. Uh, I'm sure there's an optimal number uh, to prevent two dows from healing up. And I think I might have found it right there. It looks like three fishing boats or four fishing boats healing a single fishing boat is going to do it. Now, keep in mind, I don't think I've got any armor upgrades on fishing boats. And actually, I don't know if armor upgrades affect fishing boats. Uh, but now you can see that uh, our economy is really beginning to take off. We've got plenty of food that's stacked up there. We've been pumping out non-stop uh, junks at this point. So we've been having a really, really good time on the water. We've got a fair few idols, though. Those are fishing boats that uh, that we've, we've just got that uh, we haven't retasked yet. They can be a little bit difficult to retask. He's been really smart with running his fishing boats away because it, it basically he can just run them away and then just eventually just run them back uh, to, to, his, uh, to his base. Fish in this game can be notoriously difficult to click on. You can see right there, I, I had to move my fishing boats out of the way so that they could actually click it. Uh, now the fishing, now we're taking out more of his fishing boats. Um, and at this point, I'm feeling pretty darn decent. Uh, so I do remember he's indeed playing Abbasid at this point. Uh, and we're, we're, I feel like we're definitely on top of him. We're cleaning him up. Uh, you can see that we're we're pretty much on top of on top of him, but it, it makes sense because he's just reached the castle age now, and that is a bit of a red flag for me because he's gone up a lot earlier than I expected. Um, I, I probably should have realised just by the lack of water vessels that were out. You can see he's got a fair bit of dows um, that he's out here, you know, causing havoc with, and I'm I'm somewhat caught out of position. Keep in mind they are nimble ships; they are a lot faster, a lot lighter. Uh, less health than the junks, but, uh, you know, they definitely make up for it with their, their speed 
and then nimbleness. Uh, but now that he's he's gone into the castle age, it's technically a semi-fast castle, you know, less than 10 minutes, so a little bit toxic, but uh, no nonetheless, I'm still, you know, I I'm very happy with my position just because I'm able to really achieve a lot of pressure in the early game, really sort of keep him down, um, and I I'm looking for a fast castle myself here, continuing to train more and more, uh, more and more vessels. Now I've dropped down that third lumber camp, and now this is where a difficult, a um, little bit of a difficult spot has occurred. So now he's reached the castle age, he is able to get out his tier 2 ships. Now I don't know off the top of my head what those uh, ships are called, but they counter the junks incredibly well. And the reason why is because they've got a high armor and they have a high penetrating ballista attack. So I think they do 50 damage each. And so essentially if a junk attacks it, it does like, it, it is scratching it, it's absolutely nothing. Uh, but that doesn't mean that junks are useless. Actually, when it comes to the late game, junks are still very, very useful for dealing with uh, explosive ships. So if your enemy is making explosive ships, then you want to be getting out junks because they're cheaper uh, and they fire quite fast, so they're able to deal with them effectively. They also move very fast. They can actually outrun them. Um, but uh, over the course of this game, I, I begin to learn uh, a lot about the way that the water meta works. Uh, and you guys will see that as I see it. So now going up to the third age or the castle age ourselves, We've gone up with the the site landmark or the uh, Imperial. I think it's called the Imperial Palace. Uh, but now he begins to push in. He's taking out our fishing boats here. We want to keep these alive as much as possible. And you can see that we are now getting in our upgrades as well as getting through uh, or training a, a few additional um, uh, a few additional boats. And so we've got our landmark here. Our landmark's actually firing at the ships, doing a fair bit of damage. But you can see just how little damage we're doing. He's going to be pulling back that one attack ship. It's called a Backla. Now, I know that my pronunciation isn't probably going to be perfect there. Apologies. Uh, but uh, yes, so pulling back the bagler. And now we get our war junk out. This is our big boy uh, for the third age. You can see it's got six armor, 120 attack on that. Fires a little bit more slowly than his. His have only got 50 attack. Um, and so now we're in a, a... I'm still pretty happy with our position because we've defended well. We haven't lost a whole lot. You can see we've still got nine fishing ships out here. So a, a pretty reasonable income of, of food. Keep in mind on this map, typically, even though you've got a lot of access to food, it's not something that you're going to be worrying about a lot because you're not going to be training a lot of land units in a map like this or in a, in a match like this. So now the first explosive, explosive junks are out. So the explosive junk is definitely a ship you've got to be incredibly careful of. When you spot your opponent making explosive junks, stay away. Stay away because those things hit really hard. So now you can see we've got a, uh, we've got a couple of... Uh, a, a couple more Imperial officials out. I'm training my fourth Imperial official. So they're going to be heading around, picking up uh, gold, as well as doing a little bit of supervision. So you can see that they were supervising, I think it was on a, a, a mining camp, as well as the lumber camp. So doing pretty decently. I'm, I'm quite happy with my position at this point. And uh, I think at, uh, very, very shortly, I'm about to use my landmark. So the landmark is going to actually reveal, so the Imperial Palace, it's going to reveal where his villages are. And that's going to really help me out a lot, because if I use that, as you can see, I realize he's actually on the Middle Island. And that's a and that's a pretty big giveaway for me, you know, the, to know that your opponent's on the Middle Island, that they're up to something. There's a couple of different ways that you can react to that. Now, if I'm being honest with you guys, I don't react to that at all. It, it's pretty terrible. Uh, you know, I, I don't move in any, any way to try and prevent that... Uh, you know, that landing or, or move villages of my own over there, anything like that. I'm just like, eh, don't worry, we'll deal with it, we'll deal with it. And uh, and so that's that's the consequence of, of uh, you know, of, of being a bad player, really. <laughs> so now I, I realize that his mass is really beginning to build. Uh, he, he's up to, I think, probably almost double-digit numbers of backlers at this point. And so I'm starting to get a few explosive ships out because I'm thinking... It's going to be the best way to deal with these. If I can get explosive ships to connect with these bagglers, I can really create quite a hole in his military. And if I can con get them to connect, then I should be in a really decent spot. So one of the things I try to do, you can see right here, there's these... I don't know how to describe them, but they, they're kind of like... You know, you know the hidden forests. Essentially, it's like hidden forests, but on the ocean. Now, it, it kind of just... It looks like seaweed. You can see my ships are hiding in there right now. So you can't see out of it, but at the same time, your enemy can't see into it. So it's a little bit weird, uh, especially because it's like seaweed, and it's like, well, you're, you're, you're in a giant junk, and there's like a little bit of seaweed, there's some more seaweed there, and that's preventing you from seeing out and enemy seeing in. Maybe if it was like clouds or something, or like a little bit of fog, maybe that would make a bit more sense. But um, 
yeah, nonetheless, his mass continues to build. And I can see that he's actually put a dock in the middle, which is really smart. This allows him to uh, remain present there in the middle so that he's able to protect this, this alleyway. And at the same time, he is able to heal his ships, which is obviously really important. Four explosive junks now coming out. You see they've got the, the extra speed there. They're chasing them down. The first one goes down. Second one goes down. Third one almost looking to connect. I didn't actually realize for you to detonate these ships, you actually have to command it uh, to, to detonate. I think if they just explode, uh, I don't think the, the explosive damage goes off. Either that or I'm just, uh, I was a little bit too far out of range. But nonetheless, I realize I'm in a bit of a difficult spot here because he's able to heal up in the middle. And so I'm thinking, I probably need to get onto my middle island and maybe just drop a dock on the outside. I'm not too sure exactly what the best course of action is at this point. Uh, but nonetheless, I'm still feeling pretty decent about my position. Uh, it, it's nothing too concerning at this point. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, we, we continue. You can see that uh, my food is beginning to stack up quite a bit here. So I'm starting to think more and more about the Imperial Age. And keep in mind, with the Imperial Age, the Chinese, they really come into their own in the Imperial Age. That is all about the Chinese, the Imperial Age. And the reason why is because of the Pyrotechnics upgrade, which is available at the Siege Workshop. Now, I'm going to give you guys a bit of a bummer here. The entire game, this game, I actually forget to get that upgrade. It's kind of terrible. And I feel really bad because it was, this was, this was an insane game. Uh, I will give you guys that. It was an insane game, and I feel like if I had had that upgrade, it probably wouldn't have been as insane. But nonetheless, it was still a good game. But essentially what it does is it increases the range of your um, of your gunpowder units by 20%. So as an example, like if a Bombard has got 8 range, that goes up to 9.6 range. Or if it's got 10 range, it goes up to 12 range. Now, your final ships, your big boys of the ocean, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what they're called. You've got, like, you've got the small ones are, are junks, the middle ones are war junks. So I imagine, like, the big ones are, like, battleship junks. I'm not sh too sure. Actually, I might hover over it down the bottom. No, I think I'm just making more fishing boats. All right, never mind. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> the, they, they are technically gunpowder units, and they are affected, and they get a huge range. They are, like, specialists when it comes to dealing with buildings, uh, but they also deal with ships very effectively from a distance as long as you've got something to protect them. You need to be really careful with them. You kind of need like cruisers to defend them because if explosive ships get on top of them, then they're going to have a really, really difficult time. Now he begins to push in with some more backwards. You can just see how many he's got. Looks like about 15. We're going to come from behind with our explosive ships and see how we do. You can see that we're managing right now to get in, in through here. We're going to be able to connect with quite a few. There goes one, two. It looks like we might get a third one going down as well. So plenty of uh, connections there. I'm really starting to think at this point explosive ships might be out. You see, I got an achievement right there. Having a blast in the top left-hand corner. Indeed, I was having a blast. It was uh, it was quite a fun game. Very, very nerve-wracking game, this game, to say the least. The Sniper's quite a good player. And now you can see uh, on the... Uh, well, out of our docks, we're getting those big boys out. They, are, they, they love to ground and pound. They love to just really take things to school. So I'm, I'm looking forward to you guys seeing these guys out in action. We also make sure that we get all of our upgrades getting our range increases and all of those things which kind of kind of feels bad and there they are look how slow it moves it just it's the chinese battleships are really really awesome i think i'm pretty sure they're the best in the game uh just because they're the most expensive and you guys know right if, if you buy something that costs more it's better and so now i realize he might actually be going for a sacred site victory here so this is where i start to get a bit concerned i'm like okay maybe i have to make a play for these this other island I think about it. I don't do anything about it, though. So it's classic Drongo style. You know, you, you gotta, you really gotta. Uh, <laughs> oh gosh, I, I worry about myself sometimes. But nonetheless, uh, we we continue off fighting. And now I, I will say one of the things about this: uh, when you're fighting on water, you really need to have an effective composition. You just can't go one type of ship. If you if you do, you're gonna have a difficult time. So the big boy, or, or like the battleship, he counters the tier two ship. Okay, which is what my enemy's got. You can see my enemy's got plenty of those out. So he does heaps of damage. And you can see two of the ships going down right there because we, we did a little bit of uh, a little bit of connect to the connect the dots, connect four. We we connected the two bagglers next to each other and we took them out with the the big shot, the big battleship shots. Uh, and so I see that and I'm like, you know what? I'm I'm gonna make more battleships, why not? And we're having quite a good time, but one of the things to note is that they are actually very effectively countered by explosive junks, just because the explosive junk moves a lot faster than the battleship. And so something to be very cognizant of when you are, you know, playing on these water maps, make sure that you've got a diverse composition. And so now that I realize that, you know, he's he's really thinking about um, 
you know, grabbing a hold on that first island. I, I look to expand over onto the second island, but now I can see he's actually over on the second island as well. He's placed down a mosque there, which means he's going for a sacred side victory. He is really, you know, there, there's, there's no two ways about it at this point. He's definitely not just thinking about it. He's actively looking for it. Um, I, I realize I could probably take out a... At this point, I realize I could probably take out his castle before it gets up. You can see it going up right there. Uh, but it, it was going up quite fast. I realized that my, my boats are actually in a pretty difficult position. He begins capturing the second sacred site as well. And so now I'm a little bit a little bit worried. Explosive junk's now going to be moving around this. This is where we're going for the flanking maneuver. And so I, I back out my uh, my battleships. You can see they, they make a move out pretty quickly. And we're, I'm, I'm very happy because he, he actually canceled that castle. Uh, I, I, I'm pretty sure he canceled that castle. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. I think he just knew it was going to die. At least it looked that way. So now explosive junk's moving down. He's going to have line of sight on these because of his dock. And you can see just how fast they are. But still, he's able to be effectively kill them. A couple of junks do manage to get in. But at the same time, it, it doesn't really look like they've done anything. We, we had so many junks in there. I think that must have been close to seven or eight junks, but I, I feel like I made no scratches whatsoever. Now we're deciding we're gonna uh, we're gonna land, we're gonna board the middle island, we're gonna get a dock down, get a castle down. You can see we're buying up a whole bunch of stone right there. So who who needs to mine stone or yeah mine stone? We can just buy it. That's that's the Drongo way. We've got 3.7 uh, k for don't mind me. We're just having a good time. Now keep in mind with these big battleships, they do. I think I'm pretty sure they do outrange the um the castles on on the land at this point i realized that uh I, I was making a little bit of a bad move there because i was long distance mining from that gold mine try my best now to get my battleships out because i realized i probably overstayed my welcome in this little middle corridor now keep in mind the reason why you want to be fighting over this middle corridor this is where all the resources are now you might be looking at that going uh, well middle corridor like what is there there's two sacred sites and you here you can see me saying, uh, <laughs> saying in the chat, these explosive junks seem useless. And they are indeed useless against the back one. Uh, if you're just going to use them the way that I am using them. I'm just basically running them down. And the backler is just able to very easily kite me away and continue firing while it does that. If I was going to be using them to trap my opponent or to put them in the seaweed, then that's a totally different matter. So it really comes to about using those in an effective way. And I wasn't using those in, effect, in an effective way. And so that's why they seemed useless. So I assure you guys they're not useless unless you're going to use them in that way. And so now my food is beginning to stack up. I'm like, you know what? We're, we might just get some extra, some gold out of this. I've still got 3k food sitting here. Why not? Uh, and so now creating more... I think they're called Baochuan. I'm not sure exactly. I, I didn't see 100% uh, what their name is. But we'll call on the battleship. I think that's quite a good name. And once again, scouting out where his villages are. You can see that these four islands are the only islands uh, that exist. My villager does unfortunately go down in the middle, but we did manage to get this dock up in time, which is what is important. So I, I look to try and continue expanding out here and realize that I probably need to make a stand for this sacred site. This sacred site has got another seven minutes and 40 seconds before it gets, uh, I mean, victorious, I guess is probably the best way to say it. So I need to put him out of business. And I need to do that sooner rather than later. And you can see that the cost of of, uh, of stone has now gone up quite significantly, as well as my um, my food trades are really not being effective here. So now with my battleships, I'm able to begin shelling down his, uh, his, his large castles that are on the middle island. Now keep in mind, he's got plenty of castles. This is not the only castle that he's got. He, he's got plenty of them out there. I think he's got another two over on that North Island as well, which we'll probably see soon. And now we see the backlers coming around. It would have been amazing to have my uh, my ships in or my explosive ships in there and just sort of catch him off guard. That would have been really good. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, I didn't have the foresight to do that. We see him coming around and I, I'm able to put up a pretty decent defense here. I've got, you can see plenty of towers. I've got my landmark down to the south. I've got that castle as well. So I'm really somewhat inviting him to, to somewhat join me uh, in this little... I don't know what, what the best term is for it. Maybe an estuary. I guess that's probably a canal even. Maybe not a canal, but th this little part of the ocean. Uh, and I continue kiting away. You can see that I've got a long reload time on these guys. So it's very much shoot and scoot. I managed to get a shot off right there. I spot that he's making explosive ships. And really, at this point, I start to worry. I say, okay, he's putting up another castle. I'm going to be in a bad spot here because... If that castle gets up, what am I actually going to be able to do? Because he's got backers here. He's able to defend that castle very effectively. I've got six minutes until the sacred site hits. 
Um, what to, what can I do? And I, I think I realize I've got to land. There's no two ways about it. And I'm thinking, okay, what are, what are my resources right now? What can I make a lot of? And I look at my resources and I'm like, palace guards. I can make heaps of palace guards. So I just put down a whole bunch of barracks right now. And I just say, you know what? We're just going to make as many palace guards as we possibly can. You see that another junk coming in right there. Or another explosive, rather, coming in right there. But he's overstepped the mark. We get some beautiful explosive junks right out on top of his backlers. That was a really nice explosive junk. I'm very happy with myself for that one. That was really great timing on my part. Unfortunate timing on his part. But uh, very, very happy with that one. And you can see that we're able to man we're managing to hold at this point. And I guess the difficult spot is that he's got that castle that still remains on that middle island. And so we've got to try and do our best to push that. You can see that we've got those the, the big boy ships or the battleships that are going to be able to effectively deal with it. But uh, the question is how effectively he's going to be able to hold onto that island. Because remember, we're going to need to get on that island and we're also going to need to take the sacred site. Now, I'm sure you can probably look at the length of this YouTube video and there's really no hiding that this game is probably going to go longer than 4 minutes and 55 seconds. I don't mean to spoil it for anybody who's watching right now, but I'm sure you clicked on it when you looked at it and you're like, oh, yeah, 46 minute Drongo video. I can watch this one. That's fine. There you go. Well, yes, there, there's a little bit more to this video than just a sacred site. We, I assure you that uh, we, we do try our best to contest this sacred site, but uh, we're not actually successful. We're not actually successful. Maybe Have I just thrown in a couple of random hours, a random few minutes of of footage just so that potentially there there is a, a little bit of an out maybe you guys don't know exactly what's going to happen who knows you'll have to wait and see because right now we're getting our palace guards on board our transport ship and the idea is that we're going to be trying to take out his uh castles with our our big ships but at the same time we need to land uh to get our, our palace guards onto the island and so i commanded my my battleships up to go and attack that uh, that castle, but unfortunately they, they went around the long way. Uh, and so I had to bring them back down through here. We're down to three minutes and 50 seconds at this point. I realize that I'm somewhat running out the clock or, or he's running out the clock at this point. He, he's lost his, uh, his castles there. And I say, you know what? We can probably just move our palace guards onto that, uh, onto that sacred site and neutralize it. So we move them in, but I, then I realize he's got another castle. And at that point I realized the, 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 the castle is going to shred me completely. I'm not even going to bother trying uh, to, to contest that right there. Because if I do, like, uh, the, the castle's just going to shred. So I need to neutralize that castle. But at the same time, I can't really neutralize the castle because he's got these backlers in here. He's in a really good spot. He's uh, able to defend himself quite well inside the, uh, the seaweed. So I can't really push out. If I do, then my battleships are going to be, you know, they're essentially face checking. And that's not what you want to be doing. And as you can see right here, I've already gotten too close for comfort. And now he's got fire ships that are going to be coming down. First fire ship connects. Second fire ship connects. You can see that I lose both of my battleships there. I've got a single battleship that remains. And I still need to neutralize this sacred site. I've got 2 minutes and 53 seconds to go until this sacred site gets neutralized. The 12 palace guards come out. And now he's got a second castle on the island. And I realize, okay, hold on. There's a second castle here. I'm not going to be able to take this. I, I, and I start to panic. I realize I am not going to be able to do that. And I'm sure you guys saw. I did a little bit of a little bit of a look up towards the north. I couldn't see any castles on that north island. And I said, you know what? We might actually be okay to do a bit of a sneaky. I think I made too many transport ships. I thought they were. They must have uh, gone. I must have gone for the other ship. Uh, not realizing that they they were transport ships. I must have thought they were junks. Uh, but we can see more explosive. Uh, ships going to be coming in very shortly and really I feel like I'm on a sinking ship at the moment I've got it's two minutes and 20 seconds until the n n sacred site vi uh, victory happens and I'm re <laughs> I'm really leaving it to the last minute at this point um, I begin pushing out uh, ar around you guys see me escape but uh, I'm, I'm really holding on for dear life here in my main base I I'm just trying to sort of keep my head above water so to speak and you hear that bell. You hear that bell. That's a scary sounding bell. That's two minutes until victory. It's one minute, 50 seconds to go. But my 16 palace guards in my transport ship look to save the day. Are they going to be victorious? Or is it going to be this next wave that's coming? You can see we are training up more and more uh, transport ships. There they go. Are they going to be able to get across? You can see we've got a minute 40 to go. And it's, it's a difficult spot because now, in addition to there being a sacred site on this north island, we do indeed spot that there is not just one but there is in fact 
two castles on this North Island as well. Where is it? Where is it? I think it might be down to the south. It's down. You can see it's shooting its arrows at me. And I realize, oh no, I'm in an, I'm not in a good spot here. I, I don't think I can I don't think I can win this. So you have to stay in the sacred site to prevent the victory. You can see us holding on for dear life right there. The units I, I command them into the middle. And then when I go back, when I go back, oh no, you're gonna realize exactly what's happening. Look at the site look at site two in the top left of the screen. You can see it's going back up. It's going back up. Get in get in the sacred site. I'm forcing it down. I'm trying my best. You've really got to keep them there. I put them I put them into stand ground so that they stand still. And I'm <laughs> it's really coming down to the wire. There's one, there's, there's two more that remain, and I've got a, a bunch more that I realize, and then I pull them over, and finally that sacred site goes down with a minute and 14 seconds remaining. And the question for you guys is what is now gonna be the outcome of this game? Who is gonna win? And I wish I could tell you right now, but unfortunately I can't because I must leave you because that, my friends, was how you take down a Sacred Site victory on this map, this legendary map. This is a great map. Oh, they don't explode. Oh, okay, yeah, that's when I'm realizing they don't explode if you shoot them. Yeah, so I think you have to command the explosive junks uh, to, to explode. Anyway, anyway, I will leave you guys here to watch the rest of the game. I'm curious to know what way you think it's going to go. I definitely felt like I was in a pretty bad position considering how much control he had over the middle. He had the ability to trade with the trading post in the middle. He had the sacred sites that he could take back. He was in a great spot. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next one.
不勇安攻势。士兵们，准备好。